For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves once again in Chicago, visiting what some say is the most haunted cemetery in the world, or the country, or at the very least Chicago, and that is Bachelor's Grove Cemetery, an abandoned cemetery at the end of this road, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. A south side abandoned cemetery all reported to be crawling with visitors from the beyond. But we're not at the mercy of these unwanted guests. We all know about the powerful effects that the exorcist had in getting rid of the demon in that little girl. We also know that the Ghostbusters saved New York City. And now we're going to meet a man who is trying to keep the Chicagoland area a ghost-free zone. Some spirits aren't so agreeable, like the ones in the abandoned Bachelors Grove Cemetery off 143rd Street. There have been consistent reports by uh, numerous witnesses of uh, just about every type of phenomenon known from, like I said, from phantom figures to supposedly monsters that people have seen out here, these houses, these blue balls of light. They've been reported by numerous witnesses, not just uh, isolated cases. And this dates all the way back to the 1830s. Dozens of ghostly sightings have been made here at this graveyard no longer in use and at an adjacent lagoon where mobsters' bodies were dumped during the Capone era. It's the same lagoon in which a farmer and his horse are said to have drowned accidentally in the 1870s. A few years ago, a couple of Cook County forest rangers said they saw a ghostly apparition, they thought, of that farmer and his horse. They never reported it, officially. And even what people have claimed is a two-headed monster which supposedly crawls out of the lagoon and across the 143rd Street. Kazmarek says other people nearby have seen a white house appear and disappear into the night. Hunting ghosts is only a hobby for Dale, who works as a night janitor. Where his steps will lead him, no one knows for sure. Well, maybe someone or something knows. From Bachelors Grove Cemetery, Barry Burnson, U Center 5. Now, before we begin this journey deep into the woods, we have to remind you guys that we are not paranormal investigators. Our channel is not a ghost hunting channel. There's a lot of them out there, and a lot of people think that we go ghost hunting for some reason in every single video we do. We don't. We talk about ghosts, but we're more interested in the history of the people who died. I will tell you the ghost stories, but technically, we don't really go ghost hunting. With that being said, through all of our travels, the number one location that we always get requested to go and visit, believe it or not, is this place, yeah. Bachelors Grove Cemetery, because of the ghost stories, because of the strange history of this place. I mean, nobody has been buried here in what, over 50 years? Close to that, yeah, that's what they say. But there's like weird paranormal things happening here from like ghost dogs with red eyes to double-headed lake creatures i, yeah. I mean it, there's things everywhere ghost cars a lady in white a madonna this, a madonna yeah, yeah this cemetery has a little bit of everything yes we're not expecting to run into any ghosts back here if anything it's just a nice walk in the woods i mean look at this this is definitely creepy, like some sort of storybook. No wonder people think this place is haunted back here. And you know what? It very well may be. Driving down here, we were doing some research on the ghosts that haunt these woods. Do you have a favorite story? Nothing that has too much detail, but I am a little fascinated that people continue to claim there is a two-headed monster that lives in the pond. And even what people have claimed is a two-headed monster, which supposedly crawls out of the lagoon and across the 143rd Street. I like creatures. I would love to see this. Now, there's a famous photo that was taken here of supposedly of an apparition sitting on a tombstone, yeah, they correct? they call it the Madonna. Supposedly it was captured in 1991. Now, we have that photo, so we're going to see if we can find the location. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a very big cemetery, so we yeah. might be able to. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of the path. And the cemetery is right over there on your right-hand side. There's a fence up now, which is a good thing. Yeah. 
It's not a very big cemetery, is it, Baby Ghoul? No, but it's old. It's nice to see that it gets some attention again. Well, there's no cemetery gate, but you can walk right in. And we are the only people here. So we have this entire place to ourselves. So even though it's broad daylight, if something paranormal were to happen, hopefully we catch it on camera because there's nobody else around to, that would believe us. A lot of toppled stones, look at this. The vandalism they talked about, I suppose. Looking at the photo of the apparition, it looks like it was taken from this angle. Now you can see a tree stump right here. There used to be a tree. But you see that stone right about the center of your screen? It kind of looks like an upside down crate. Now in this photo, you can see a woman sitting there. And then just behind her, you can see a pool from the fence, the metal fence. That metal fence is still here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the crate-like tombstone. Now, if that is an apparition, an actual photo of a ghost, she would have been sitting right on that tombstone. That's kind of cool to line up the shot. This place is just massive. Look at this. The trees are what really makes it extra creepy. I mean, you can imagine being out here in the middle of the night, right? Terrifying. Every good ghost story has a lady in white. Every good haunted cemetery should have a lady in white. And guess what? Bachelor's Grove Cemetery has its very own lady in white. A, a ghostly woman, possibly the ghostly woman who was sitting on that tombstone, walking through the cemetery at night carrying an infant child. Now the funny thing about this, there's a tombstone here in the cemetery, probably the most popular tombstone that actually says infant child daughter. People come and they bring flowers all the time. And there's her stone right there. Infant daughter, nothing else. But you can see there's a pumpkin, there's some flowers, some toys and bracelets, a little pacifier. Let's walk around the tombstone and see if it says anything about the family name on the other side. Huh, the Fulton family. Oh, and this is interesting. Right down here, directly behind where it says infant daughter, it says father, 1838 to 1922. And somebody left a bottle of beer. I do wonder if the mother had an engraved stone here because there's one thing to note that the vandalism had gotten so bad at the cemetery that not that long ago, maybe about 50 years ago, the relatives to the people who were buried here exhumed the bodies and moved them to a safer place because the graves are being robbed. Almost every grave here has been vandalized. If you see, it's very flat because they're all missing their headstones. Some are laying right next to the graves and others are missing entirely. I'm kind of sad because I didn't think ahead that according to all the children's movies where they encounter creatures, the creatures love peanut butter sandwiches. We need to bring peanut butter sandwiches for ghost creatures. That, and especially if there's any rashes of uh, phantom kangaroos. You think they like peanut butter? They have to. Mm, Let's go butter. take a look at the lake. Yeah. Now, of course, we're out here in broad daylight, but we haven't seen any ghost dogs with red eyes, no phantom cars with phantom drivers that disappear, no glowing figures. Probably would have been easier to see them at night. But here's the lake. And like Jessica said, we do not have any peanut butter sandwiches for ghost creatures. I wish I had. Maybe I could pull Tessie out if she's here. Oh man. Now the fun thing about this, this hidden, abandoned cemetery is right next to a major road. We had to walk across it to get here. I 
I'm hearing something over there. You hear that? The leaves? No, it's like, it's gotta be an animal. Now we're gonna walk around the lake and back into the woods because there's a few things that we saw online that are probably no longer here. They, they, they probably cleaned them up, but like old abandoned mausoleums and holes in the ground. This is kind of peaceful, even though it's next to a major road. <laughs> We've got the cemetery off to the right. We're gonna continue down the path out into the woods away from the actual fenced in cemetery. Let's see where this path leads us. We saw some pictures online of some old tombstones and mausoleums and yeah, I'd I, don't, to find I can't those. figure out where they would be. I'm hoping they're down this path. So far, we have found nothing. The pathway goes into the woods, it hits the creek bed and then it splinters off in a couple different directions. I'm beginning to think that the pictures we saw online might not be for this cemetery. Maybe for were, something else. Maybe it's just so overgrown you can't get to it anymore. Now this is interesting to point out. Right now Jessica's standing on asphalt. It's like an old road that goes back here through the woods. And then, and then it, it just, just drops off right over here at the creek. Maybe this used to be a bridge. It's got to be a bridge. Deeper into the woods we go. Is that a wheelchair? Baby goal. There's a wheelchair over here. That's a little odd. It looks like it's a wheelchair for kids. It's been out here for some time. It's covered in mud. It does look to be about the size of a child's, but old hospital wheelchairs are actually quite small. Hard to say. When I say Jessica and I don't go ghost hunting. It's not that we don't believe in ghosts. Occasionally we'll do some ghost hunting here and there just for the, like the fun of it. But believe it or not, we actually have quite an extensive history with ghost hunting. Whenever we lived in Savannah, Georgia, we were working at a place called the Sorrel Weed House as ghost tour guides. And we've had things happen to us that to this day, blow our minds. We have photos that we have shared with people in person of things that we've encountered inside this house in Savannah, Georgia, that whenever people come up to us and they say, hey, look at this ghost, it's an orb, or this is this weird mist that appeared. After seeing what we've seen, none of that other stuff means anything to us. I often tell people, if you have a, it, people come up to us and say, hey, take a look at this ghost that I caught on camera. And I always tell them, unless it's a face looking back at me, don't want to see it because I've seen some crazy, crazy crap. Like I said, we are believers in the paranormal. And skeptics. And skeptics. We're, we're the type of people that unless it happens to us, we find it really hard to believe. But once you see a full body apparition or a face looking at you and interacting with you directly, it's hard to look at orbs or yeah. anything else that's not like that. Now here's the thing, Bachelors Grove Cemetery is really cool, but what we saw online is known as the Bachelors Grove Bunker. And it's about two miles away from the cemetery actually. A lot of people go to the cemetery looking for it. But you see those cell towers off in the distance? That's all we have to go on. Somewhere back there in the woods across this field is where the bunker is. We're gonna find it. In order to get to this place, you kind of have to know that it's here. There's really no directions. You can find the general area online. 
and if you know somebody who can direct you to it. But basically, this is one of those places where you have to put your feet on the ground and go search for it. There's no promise that we're gonna find it. We just know that it's back here. And we have another couple hours until the sun sets before we're stuck in the woods after dark and the temperature starts going. And who knows, if we get lost, maybe we will become ghosts too here at Bachelor's Grove. I'd like to haunt somebody. <laughs> For the most part, it's a pretty clear path back here. I'm hoping that this is going to make it easy to find. I think once we get back to this clearing, we should be able to pull up the GPS. I think we're headed the right track. See yeah. a lot of discarded beer cans. Now, for the sake of adventure, we're not going to show you our GPS and how we got here. We want you to go on this adventure if you're in the area and come down and check it out. But it is an actual underground bunker. Do you remember the last time we came across a bunker in Florida up in like, well, what was that area called? Mount Dora. Mount Dora. We knew it was there. We saw pictures. We just never found it. We think we know. Us and bunkers. It's like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter sandwiches. Underground oh. safari. <laughs> well, what is that? Underground safari. Underground safari. Or a rash of phantom kangaroos. That's my new saying. If you watched our video on Resurrection Mary, you know where that came from. I might be imagining things, but this kind of looks like a path, so it's a place to start. Now with all the leaves everywhere, knowing that this is an underground bunker, <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a little harder than what we thought. So baby ghoul, right over here there's a, there's a hump, like a lump in the, in the ground on the other side of these trees. Let's go over that way. It's right here, baby ghoul. Look at this hole. Ah. Oh, wow. Right? Now that is cool. The stairs are covered in leaves, which are a little slick, so take caution. Push aside this little tree limb here. she goes. I don't think this opens up to a room. I can't let her down here by herself. <laughs> Baby, this is cool. This is cool. This is very, very cool. This really is something else. Now, there's no rooms that are accessible from right here. No, it just comes out the other end. Sort of. But, you, but this is here. It's real. It actually exists. Look at this. On the other side, there's an old light switch. It's all busted up, but you can tell that there's... At one point, there was electricity that was run to this place. Man crazy. Down here in the hole, there's a couple different things that somebody has left. Looks like this is an old star chart for the northern sky. And I love this. Check out the metal band, Bachelor's Grove on Spotify. Hey, if you like metal, give them a listen. Tell them Grim Life sent you. Now, if you look at the underbrush, about the center of your screen, you can see some concrete walls and some piping. It's got a couple different passageways that go underground. But there's a hole here that just kind of looks a little uh, 
disturbing. Now be careful backing up, baby ghoul. But that's, that's kind of cool. And right now you're standing on a giant concrete slab in itself. Mm -hmm. It goes way over there and way over there. You can see the supports that used to hold walls here and some piping and even some old metal drums. Well, let's get this camera down inside the hole. Use the light from my phone, see if we can see anything. Can't really see much. Got some leaves. Echo, echo, echo. I heard something down there, but I think it was just like a drip. Looks like there's some water and it goes back there pretty far. Man, that's crazy. I'm glad we didn't stick this down here and just find a body in the hole. Now, what'd you find over here, baby ghoul? Looks like this may have been like a water meter, maybe? Is that what that looks like to you? I don't know. But if you look over to your left there, it's an old power outlet. Yeah, right there. Looks like at one point there was even an old sign here. It's impossible to know what it said, but it's still here. I'll get over here. With that being said, I'm here in Chicago, Bachelors Grove Cemetery, as well as this hidden, somewhat secret bunker, if you will, out in the woods. Thank you for joining us on another grim adventure. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck Just come my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stays Good luck never stays a day Bad luck's always coming my way